spit it? Look, we've got to do something about this. Lisa, what's wrong? It cannot go on any longer. What is it? You were so happy and smiling a few minutes ago. I know I was. Here. I was. Until I went into my room and saw that someone has been in there. How do you know? Because I saw, I, I went to my drawer, I opened the drawer, and my antique earring is gone. Well, that's not very serious. I mean, what could you do with one antique oh, earring? Oh, please, Bennett. I just hate to see you so upset on such a beautiful new day. Look, it's not the earring that bothers me so much. It's the fact that I know, I know that Hester was in my room snooping around all of my things, and the reason why she took the earring was so I would know for sure that she'd been in there. Maybe the earring's still there. Maybe it just didn't look carefully but, enough, is it? No, that isn't true. That can't possibly be, because I went through every drawer in my room, and it is not there, and I know she's the only one who could have taken it. Now, you've got to get rid of her. Look, I, I tried to explain this to you last night. Dr. Bickford is very concerned about Hester. He's, a, he's afraid that she might have another nervous oh, breakdown. Yes. Look, I, I'm going to have a nervous breakdown. Do you want to stand by and watch me have one? I'm going to have one. She's driving me to it. That's You're what she wants. She wants that more than anything. You're exaggerating. You're much too strong and stable for Hester Pierce ever to drive you over the brink. Uh, she's trying to drive me out of the house. I don't see why you can't see that. She won't succeed. I'll never let you go. Look, Bennett, really, I have just about had it. I really have. I, I want you to fire her, please. No, I, I, I just can't risk upsetting her like that now. Oh, maybe it would be the best thing in the world that could possibly happen to the girl. I mean, maybe uh, she needs this, she could get her psychiatric care she needs so desperately. You wouldn't say that if you'd seen it, what it was like last time. No, I, I just can't do it. Okay, I'll tell you what you do. Put an extra strong lock on my door and make sure I'm the only one who has the key. Look, I know this is very difficult for you, but, but please try to be patient, and I promise you, now, let her go as soon as we're married. I don't know what difference that's going to make. Well, she'll have to realize that there's a, a new mistress of the house. But no, I, I, I just can't... I just can't upset her any more than she already is. <laughs> brought you some hot broth and a pot of tea. I thought you'd be at your desk working on your novel. What's the matter? I'm not feeling very well this morning. It's those headaches again, isn't it? They're coming back now too, aren't they? I'm trying to make something out of nothing. It's a, it's a headache, pure and simple. Well, I know better. I remember those terrible blinding headaches you got those last few weeks before Stop Ruth. badgering me. I, I just don't want to be badgered this morning. Well, it's for your own good. Let me worry about that. Well, drink your broth while it's still I'm hot. I'm hungry. It'll help your headache. Will you let me worry about that? Oh. It's all starting again, isn't it, Bennett? The headaches. The nausea that went with them. Pretty soon you'll be having those spells where you stop can't it, remember. Stop it. I told you to stop badgering me. If I can't keep quiet, I'm going to have to ask you to leave the inn and never come back. Well, that would be the easy thing to do. But I'll never leave you now that I see it happening all over again. Hester, maybe, maybe you ought to be concerned about yourself. If you recall, you're the one that collapsed last time. Dr. Pickford's very worried about you now. Oh, Bennett, please. Call off this marriage and send Mrs. Coleman away. Terrible things will happen that neither of us can control if you don't get that woman out of here. Can't you feel it closing in? Can't you hear the sounds of Ruth crying at night? This should be a warning to you. Esther, I think Dr. Pickford's underestimated your condition. You're mad, Hester. And I'm not going to stand here and listen to your wild rantings. I'll go find Lisa. She's the only one I can trust around here. Well, looks like practically the whole family's hey, welcome here. Welcome home, Dad. stranger. Donald? Well, that's right. You two haven't seen each other since you got back from London, I bet. Oh, and I'm sorry I wasn't home when you stopped by the folks. Well, I'll run along let you two get caught up on things. Your mother's very excited about you and Dana coming for dinner, and Mary. 
matter of fact, she started cooking before I left the house this morning. <laughs> if that's the case, we all better have a light lunch. <laughs> yeah, I think so. I'll see you later. See okay, you later, Dad. Dad. I guess Tom gave you the news about Penny. Yeah, and I was relieved to hear it. Well, she was feeling much better by the time I left. And how did you find things here when you got back? Well, everything was fine at Memorial. John Dixon took care of my patients while I was away and had no big problems. I released Ian McFarland yesterday. He made remarkable progress while I was gone. Well, maybe that was a good idea, having Dana stay behind to uh, encourage him. It certainly was from Ian's point of view. Put those in the back of your car. Uh, Valerie, what am I going to do with a bushel of apples? You're going to eat them, <laughs> silly. They're the last picking and they're delicious. Well, thank you. <laughs> hmm. Sure, I'm glad you decided to pick such a nice day to drive out and see me. Oh, it really is gorgeous. But you know, there is a little nip in the air that spells winter to me. I know, I know. And I just hate to think about cold and snow this early November. What are you talking about? You and Kate are going to be all comfortable here in the farmhouse, curled up in front of the fireplace? Right, sure, and helping Mr. Kellogg dig snow out of the driveway. <laughs> I don't think we'll have snow until after Thanksgiving. Oh, oh, speaking of which, I want you to come out here and have Thanksgiving dinner with us. Well, thank you, but um, I, I don't know. I'm, I haven't really planned that far ahead right now. It's not that far ahead. It's only two weeks. Yeah, I know. I know. We're going to have turkey, and we're going to have chestnut dressing. We're going to have all the trimmings. Oh, Ralph. I'm sorry, Valerie. It's just that I'm really not looking forward to the holidays this year. It's going to be the hardest time for me. I know. I understand. <sighs> holidays are for family and togetherness, and I thought by Christmas, probably Mary and I... Believe me, I know what you're feeling. I had some tough holidays myself. I know you have. But things have finally worked out just right for you. Exactly, and it's going to work out just right for you, too. Sure, sure, someday. Listen, tell me something. Are you still planning on going to Ecuador for Christmas? Yes. Kate and I are going to go down and spend at least two weeks with Alex. Oh. Now, see, that's a good idea. Why don't you do that? Why don't you take a trip? Uh, where would I go? I don't know. You could go to Palm Springs, or, or you could go and meet Tracy and the whole gang at Cup and Deep. Yeah, I'm sure either place would be equally disastrous and even more lonely than being here. I'll tell you, I've cut myself off from that kind of life, even more than you have. I really, it honestly doesn't mean anything to me anymore. I suppose not. Besides, I, uh, I can't think about uh, planning a fancy vacation to anywhere right now. I've poured so much of my own money into this shopping center. It's going to take a long time for me to even get my investment back. Hello. Uh -huh. Hey. Hi, Hi Ralph. Hi. Gee, you haven't been out here in a long time. Well, don't tell me. Don't tell me you miss me. <clears throat> sure I did. I missed you a lot. <laughs> Good. How are things going? How, how is the uh, pre-algebra coming along? Uh, <laughs> I get the picture. I won't win any prizes in math. Uh. Don't worry. When Alex gets back, he'll help you. He's a whiz. <laughs> All my other subjects are fine, though. Good. Kate, I have some good news. I talked to Kim today, and she said she's going to bring Betsy and Betsy's girlfriend, Lois, out here sometime over the weekend. Oh. What's wrong? I thought that would be happy for you. Well, I'm glad Betsy's coming, but I'm not so glad that Lois is coming, too. Really? Why? I don't know. Lois is always trying to act grown up. And when Betsy's around her, she's different. Like, how do you mean? All they do is talk about boys and clothes and stuff like that. Oh, well, you never can tell. You might start to get interested in boys and clothes and stuff like that pretty soon. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> Listen, kid, I almost forgot. I, I have a message from you from a, a girl who works as a waitress at Wrangler's. Sheila Winston? Yeah, that's right. She asked me all about you, how you were, and she said that she still had that beautiful mum plant that you gave her when she was in the hospital. I like her. Strange, though. She always has a sad look in her eyes. You sure are philosophical today. <laughs> Listen, how would you like to have a nice pot of tea? I think that sounds great. Okay. Oh, you know what we could do? We could ask Kim maybe if Betsy could come out when Kim goes to visit Lisa. Okay? That's a great idea, okay. but I'm not inviting Lois Middleton. Okay. Lisa, I can hardly hear you. Well, I know, uh, Derek, I I'm trying to... 
keep my voice low because uh, Bennett is taking a nap and I don't want to disturb him. Oh. And I, I wanted to call you earlier, but um, I had to wait until Hester got up the stairs. Was something wrong? Yes. Look, I think I'm going to need your help. Uh, Hester's up to her old tricks again. What's happened now? Well, you know the antique uh, earring that I found down in the basement? I distinctly remember putting that in my bureau drawer. Well, now it's missing, and I know that Hester's the one who took it. Why? Well, for the same reason that she slashed up Ruth's portrait and uh, she makes all these weird noises in the middle of the night. She's trying to scare me away from here. She's trying to scare me away from Bennett. I don't know why he doesn't just get rid of her. Well, he has a certain loyalty to her and he also says that she's been around here for a long, long time. And he's also afraid that uh, she might have a second nervous breakdown. Well, I suppose, but... He can't expect you to put up with that nonsense of hers forever. I know. I know that. That's why I I thought if I could prove to him once and for all that Hester is behind all of this, he will fire that woman right on the spot. But this is where I need your help. What can I do? Well, um, I know that that portrait and the antique earring, they have to be somewhere in this at the end. I know Hester has hidden it somewhere. I have a pretty good idea that she's probably hidden it in her room. I don't have to tell you that it's very difficult for me to get into her room. But I did get in there yesterday. But her closet door is locked. And um, it seems to me that uh, well, she's, she has this key ring. And on this key ring is a special key. And it says the closet. Go on. Well, I thought if I could persuade Bennett to uh, give her the night off and then... Bennett could take me out to dinner. Then you could come into the inn and you can search the place and, and see if you can find it. I know this is asking a lot. No, I, I don't mind, but uh, how am I going to get in? Oh, that's easy. See, what I'll do is I, I will leave the key to the inn and also to her closet under the doormat, right? Uh, oh, well, in front of the door on the porch. Okay, and uh, I'll put it back there after I've uh, searched your room. No. No, no, now don't do that. Uh, I, I wouldn't want anyone else to find the keys. Uh, what you do is you just hold on to those keys, and I will see you tomorrow, and I'll get it from you in person. All right. I tell you, if you can help me get rid of Hester, I will be eternally grateful to you. <laughs> well, you know, I'd do anything for you. Besides, I wouldn't want you to try yourself and uh, run the risk of getting caught. All right, now, Derek, you just be very careful out here alone tonight. I will. Derek, again, I just, I can't tell you how grateful I am for your help. And, um, uh, look, I'm going to call you back as soon as I talk to Bennett. Okay, I'll be waiting for your call. It won't be all night, I'm sure. And again, thank you so much. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Oh, now this, uh, Santini steel bid here, the reinforcement measure, it's almost triple what the original bid was. Oh, darn! Steel has gone way up. I mean, steel has skyrocketed more than anything else except uh, gas and oil. Yeah. Yeah, well, that could be a problem if the trend continues. I don't want to let my client go broke. We might have to consider bringing in other partners. I sure hope not. I'd like to keep things just the way they are. You think that's possible? I mean, I, I didn't know Ralph had any financial worries. Well, he didn't. But he will if he has to keep pumping his own money into this project. Well, thank you, Jay. I'll report all of this to Ralph. Yeah, sure. And uh, let me know if uh, there's anything else you want to go over. Sure will. So long. Yeah, goodbye. Hi, uh, this is Jay Stallings. Listen, I want to talk to Merv Santini right away. Oh, I'll get it. Don't disturb yourself while you're working. It's probably the delivery from the store. Oh, hi, 
Dee. I didn't think you'd still be here. Uh huh. Come on in, Dana. I thought you were working at the law office this afternoon. Well, I was going to today, but I changed my mind and I called in and asked for the day off. Oh, I see. There was just so much work to be done here. I wanted to get Ian organized once and for all. Well, everything looks very neat and organized to me. Ian's working. So I see. Dana! I didn't even hear you come in. Well, I just arrived. I hope I'm not interrupting you. Oh, you could never interrupt me. Besides, you came at the perfect moment. I need your help. Well, it looked as though everything was going beautifully. Well, it was before and it will again if you can answer a very simple question. I want to know this section I'm working on here. Now, if it's going to work in terms of choreography. Could I have a cup of tea first? Certainly. D? <laughs> yes. I'm right I'm here. so tired. I've been teaching all day. Oh, well, that's funny. You don't look tired. You look wonderful. But you used to look wonderful after a performance, too. And then you were really tired. <laughs> that's true. If you'd like a cup of tea, I'll be glad to make it for you. Fine. I'd like a cup of coffee, too. Sorry. You've already had your quota for the day. What? No more coffee. Oh, come on. Please, a small cup. You can have some warm milk. I hate warm milk. It's on Bob's list. Oh, Bob's list. Uh, well, that'll be fine then. Look, Dee, why don't you forget about the coffee and milk? I'll do that. No, I'd better do it. I rearranged the shelves in the kitchen. <laughs> I'm afraid you won't be able to find anything. <laughs> like it. What a little organizer you've got there. Isn't she something? Just what the doctor ordered. <laughs> How does that feel? Uh, very soothing. Mm. Think you're going to feel up to taking me out to dinner tonight? Yeah, I feel much better. Thanks to your loving care, my headache's practically gone. That's good. I'm even developing an appetite. Oh, I'm glad to hear that. Hester told me you didn't have much of an appetite at all for lunch today. Uh, worries too much. Maybe we ought to call up Dr. Bickford and invite him and Derek to join us. Oh, I think that's a very sweet idea, but let's not do it tonight. Why not? Well, because I want to be very selfish. I want you all to myself. It's fine with me. <laughs> Actually, I think I was just trying to prove what I said about uh, managing my jealousy was true. <laughs> it's so foolish. Of course it's foolish. You have no reason to be jealous. Tell me, um, how did uh, Hester take it when you told her she was going to have another night off? Not well, but I insisted. Oh, that's so silly. She ought to be grateful. Mm, not Hester. Really, I, uh, I want you to know it means a lot to me that we have the end to ourselves tonight. Just be alone. Have a romantic, beautiful evening like we did the other night. It means a lot to me, too. You never did tell me, uh, where you were going to take me for dinner. I made reservations at the old Colonial Inn. It's, uh, it's not far from here. You'll love it. Well, why haven't you ever taken me there before? Several reasons. Is that, uh, well, because you went there with Ruth? Yes. We went there quite often. So naturally it has painful memories for me. But uh, I'm going to get rid of all those memories, and after you and I have been there, why? We'll think of it as our place from now on. <laughs> That's nice. Now, I like to hear those words from you. I really do. Mm. Well, Hester, another night off. I didn't ask for it, you know. Well, Hester, I think you ought to take more time off. I really do. I think you work way too hard. Well, uh, did you get everything locked up out there? Yes, I took care of it. Good. I'm so glad, because we certainly wouldn't want anyone breaking in while we were away, would we? Are you sure you feel well enough to go out to dinner? Yes. I could just as easily fix something here. No, thank you. Can't you make him change his mind? When he gets these headaches, it usually upsets his stomach, too. It would be much wiser if I... Just stop it. You're not running my life anymore. Lisa and I are going out to dinner, and you're going to... we're going to drop you off at home first. Now, go get ready to leave. I have to check some things in my room first. Well, then go do it. I, I put insulation along the cracks in the attic windows, so that strange wailing noise you say you've been hearing at night should stop now. 
I thought you would appreciate knowing. Thank you. I appreciate it more than you know. I'll be back shortly. Bennett, I just love the way you stood up to her the way you did. I hope it doesn't have the wrong effect. What do you mean, the wrong effect? N nothing. I don't, don't worry about it. Is this place as old as the Willows? Not quite. It's 18th century, though. Oh. Well, I love it. I really do. I think it's just beautiful. The kitchen's good, too. You'll love dinner. <laughs> good. I know I will. But Bennett. Yeah? You really shouldn't uh, even consider this as any kind of competition for us. Oh, believe me, when I get through fixing up the Willows, it's going to be a real show place. We are just going to have to turn people away in droves. I'm glad you're so enthusiastic about it all. Oh, I am. It's going to be marvelous. And all the people they'll have here will just be simply people who just couldn't make reservations for us. <laughs> oh, we've got to get started on it right away, you know. After the wedding. Oh, yes, all right. As soon as the wedding, then we we'll work on it. And... Ben, what? Oh, please don't tell me. Not the headache. It's not coming back, is no, it? No, no, it's not the headache. It's, it's, it's blinding pain. Uh, Bennett, would you like to go home? Uh, no, no, no. It'll pass. I wouldn't mind. Uh, how do you like your wine? It's quite good. I thought that, uh, I could have some uh, French doors installed, too. It would be lovely, right off the dining room. It, it would be... It's a good idea. Yes. I, I thought, and especially in the summertime, it would be lovely for the guests. Oh, Lisa, I'm sorry. Uh, you're going to have to... You're going to have to forgive me. I, I have to go outside for some air. I, I feel a little queasy. Oh, so. uh, no, let me come with you. No, 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 you. it's too cold. No, I don't please, mind. Please, please, stay and enjoy your wine. And I'll go out, the air will fix me up in, in just a minute. Then I can come back and enjoy my dinner with you. Please. I just hate for you to go out there all by yourself. I'll be fine. I'll be fine. May I pour you more wine, ma'am? Yes, thank you. A little more. Thank you. Cheese puff? Mmm, looks good, smells good. I bet it tastes good. Mmm, it does taste good. <laughs> Can I make you a drink? No, I think I'm going to wait until everyone else gets here. Oh, I better take this off, too. You know, I uh, kind of like to see you come out of the kitchen looking like that. Looking domestic? Mm-hmm. Yep. Whoop, there they are. Welcome. Hi. Good evening. Very good to see you. Hi, David. Brother. Good to see you. Good to see you, too. Uh, you want to hang that up? Yeah. Oh, it's nope. nippy outside. Much to Franny's delight. She's praying for an early snowfall. Oh, so is Fred. Teddy. He just can't wait to go sledding. Well, listen, when that happens, let's all go out to Valerie's farm. You know, she has some great hills for sledding. Oh, oh can I go? Fun? Yeah, you can go. Okay. <laughs> Come on, sit down, and I'll make you all a drink. I have some uh, iced uh, or chilled white wine. I'll have some white wine. I'll have the same. Think you can make a martini? I can try to make a martini. Good. Okay. <laughs> We will have one drink here, and then we're off to Mom and Dad's for dinner. Dana, I heard some terrific news about you. Donald told me that you and Bob have set a date. Well, I backed Bob into a corner. Oh. Of course, I was kicking and screaming as she did. <laughs> and I forced him to decide on Valentine's Day. Believe me, there was uh, very little force involved. Mm -hmm. What about Ian? I mean, how's he doing now that he's out of the hospital? Oh, he's doing beautifully. He's getting back to his work, and he's following all of... Uh, Bob's orders on diet, exercise, everything. Good. Dee's working for him now. Our Dee? Dee Our Stewart? Dee Stewart? Yes. She's quite a <laughs> yeah, determined she's quite young a lady. How is this work going? Well, it may be a little premature to say this, but I think that this ballet is going to be one of the greatest things he's ever written. Ooh, that's saying a lot. You know, it's going to be done at a Royal Command performance in London. 
And as a dancer, I can only tell you from what I've heard, I would love to dance it. It has such sweet... Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I'm going on about it, aren't I? Well, it's very interesting. <laughs> Thank you for saying that. But I'm not going to mention it again this evening. I had better go look at the cheese puffs before they become cheese crisps. <laughs> I'm almost afraid to tell Lisa where I found these. I'll have to, I guess. I wonder what makes them so frightened about this earring. time before I leave and then go straight to a payphone and call Sheriff Hargreaves. Can't waste any time now. Fashions furnished by Arpeggia and by Cesarani. Menswear from Barney's. This is Dan McCullough inviting you to join us again Monday for As the World Turns.